lucky tonight to have with us Dr. Ramun Khan. It sounds like Amy read the press for me somewhat. Uh, first of all, to all my friends, colleagues from Chicago, it's great to be back. It's a real pleasure, and this is my first uh, speaking engagement since uh, we made the announcement that uh, I couldn't stay in New York as long as I did, so uh, I'm back home. Let me, you know, after the discussion you just heard from Otto on the impact, the numbers, I'm not going to spend any time. I only have one slide. I'd like you to just take a look at the slide. I apologize for the graphics, but take a look at the slide. This was a slide of a picture of a child taken somewhere in the world. It doesn't matter where. But for everybody in this room who's a parent, a sibling, a grandparent, take a close look at this child. And I'm going to speak to you as a clinician first. Forget my business role. This is a young child on a street who's thin, who's malnourished, who's cachectic. Not only that, but this child is surviving on its own, picking up crumbs off the ground. Ask yourselves, when's the last time you wanted food like this child is wanting food? Then ask, take another careful look and you will notice this child's head is hanging low, humble, miserable in many ways. But actually this child is hiding its food because of fear. The fear is that somebody's going to take those few crumbs away. Take a close look. Those are crumbs, stale bread crumbs. And that child is feeding itself with fear for the loss of that food. That is the reality. And let me share with you just a couple of numbers, because I'm only coming with you two numbers. There are today one billion people in the world to go to bed every night hungry. One billion. So this is not about Pakistan. This is not about Asia. It's not about Africa. It actually is about the world. Ironically, this is a world where one billion people are overfed, overweight, obese, and have too much food. At the same time, there are one billion that are facing this reality. And so the issue facing the world today and the inequities that we look at are those not of inability of our earth to produce, not of inability of the world to feed itself. As Gandhi once said, there is enough to meet everybody's needs. There are perhaps not enough to meet everybody's greed. And that is the challenge. So I find myself as an endocrinologist, once having managed healthcare and practiced medicine for almost 20 years in my career, today as the chief executive officer of the global nutrition businesses of one of the largest food and beverage corporations in the world, actually this country's largest food business. And as I look across the world and the different businesses and the different parts of our company, the easy part for us that we can directly manage was to immediately pledge and deliver $1 million from PepsiCo to Pakistan, as we've done in many other parts of the world. That was our duty, it was our responsibility. We did that, including supporting HDF. That was the easy part. The tough part. The tough part is no company, no government, no community, no society can solve this in isolation. The only way this can be done, and believe me, I travel the world thinking about different businesses around food, obviously that's my job. The only way we can solve this is through collaboration, mutual understanding, and actually putting away our differences and saying, how do we work together to do this? Unfortunately, even within our own communities, whether we're talking about Pakistan communities, Indian communities, American communities, however you want to define yourself, we find differences. The consequences of those differences are this picture. That's the reality. 
So while Adil did a superb job of setting the context of the scale of the issue, I'd like to briefly pose to you, how do we address this issue? And that's how an academic and a businessman partner. The role of academicians is critical in defining the issue. The role of business, at the end of the day, is to play a critical role in saying, how do we make a difference? Let me give you the second statistic I was going to share with you. 40% before the flood, 40% of Pakistan's fruit produce, after it's been harvested, never gets to a human being for consumption. 40% of the food produced on the land, collected and harvested, actually never gets to a human for consumption because it rots before it gets there. Why is that? Because the infrastructure cannot sustain the demand. Transportation, storage, distribution. The solutions to address this are actually relatively straightforward. We don't have to invent things in Pakistan. If you compare the 1960s to today, the productivity of the land per acre used to be the same in East and West Punjab. Today, it is a fraction in West Punjab compared to East Punjab. It is a fraction of what it is per acre. The issue of irrigation technology, application, ability to manage, and ultimately, the infrastructure to provide oversight is lacking. Whether you're in a business, the issues that are challenges from large businesses to increase efficiencies are not available. So my pledge, and to finish off, and why is that relevant to this child, the irony of it is, there is no doubt in the scientific literature that malnourished children the 10 million or 50 million, 15 million in Pakistan, there is no doubt that a decade from now, 15 years from now, the brains of these children will be relatively deficient, their intelligence will be blunted, their productivity at work will be less, and not only will we have created a generation that may have hostility, worse in many cases, we will create an entire population of adults that is actually not able to fulfill its genetic potential to even contribute to the society. And this then creates a perpetual vicious cycle. Only way that's ever been proven to change that is nutritional intervention, providing food, providing nourishment, providing some safe environment for these children to grow up so they can take care of themselves. So my last words are easy, pretty straightforward. Take a close look at this child. Take one more look and take a look at the expression that you can imagine on this child's face of gratitude for what he has, fear for what he might lose, with no thought, not only of the next day, but what's going to happen by the end of the day for this child, let alone we talk about years to come. Thank you very much. Picture you in the sun, wondering what went wrong, and falling down.